We are in the United States in the sunny state of Florida at Kennedy Space Center. Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels and the European Space Agency together with our partners at NASA are getting ready to return to the moon. ESA is playing a key role in NASA's Artemis program, which will bring astronauts back to the moon. The European Service Module, or ESM, will provide propulsion, power, and thermal control for the Orion spacecraft. When the first Artemis mission launches on an SLS rocket this year, ESM-1 will guide an empty spacecraft into orbit around the moon in a test of what's to come. There are countless steps in this journey to the moon, but one of the major moves before launch is getting the hardware from the Vehicle Assembly Building to Launch Pad 39B. This massive structure is a crawler. This is going to carry the SLS rocket with Orion and the European Service Module out onto the launch pad. We spoke with NASA's John Giles. This is crawler number two here. She was built back in the 1960s, mid-1960s for the Apollo program. And she's handled Apollo and Skylab and shuttle and now she's going to be the crawler of the future for SLS. And she's been modified over the years for the different programs and for SLS we've had to modify her, we've had to increase her carrying capacity by 50%. So we spent a few years doing that, and in the last few years we've been getting her ready by taking the mobile launcher back and forth to the pad and doing a few other tests around here. She herself, I know this is rude, but she weighs 6.75 million pounds. We'll carry a mobile launcher that weighs 11.4 million pounds, and then we'll carry the SLS launch vehicle, which is somewhere around 3.5 million pounds. So. Add that all up and, and that's what we'll carry back and forth to the pad and then with each mission as the launch vehicles get bigger, heavier, bigger second stages and bigger cargoes, bigger solids, the weight just keeps going up. Our, our speed to take SLS to the pad is going to be 0.83 miles an hour. That's the speed they determine will give the rocket the smoothest ride. The distance from the Vehicle Assembly Building to Launch Pad 39B is about 4.2 miles, or 6.75 kilometers. So, for Artemis, we're looking at a minimum five-hour trip to the launch pad. People don't realize it, but what we're carrying does move around a lot. So those, those gel cylinders we have have the great task of keeping everything level. We actually have a... we have... Um, engineers that are trained to keep it level and then we have a system that also works to keep it level. So as we roll to the pad in the middle of the night, we'll get there, take us about eight hours, we'll roll up the pad slope, we'll drop it off, and then we will roll back down to the bottom of the hill. And that's where we'll sit, right outside the gate, and they'll start performing tests. And we'll stay there for as long as they need us to, and it's usually until a day or two before launch, until they, they know everything's in great shape and they're ready to launch. Then we'll roll back to what's called the, uh, the MSS Park site, and we'll stay there. And so if, if they need us for anything, it's just a few hour ride to get back to the pad. As John mentioned, the crawler has a history in transporting lunar missions, but adaptations were needed to prepare for this one. They were originally designed for 12 million pounds. Uh, the requirement for SLS was 18 million pounds, so it's a 50% increase. Each corner, we call them a truck. So the truck consists of two of these tread belts, 57 shoes each. Each shoe weighs uh, over 2,000 pounds, and they roll across 11 very large roller bearings underneath that we replaced when, when we modded this. So we made them bigger and stronger so they could handle the extra weight. Right behind here we have a gearbox. There's 16 of them on the crawler. They were all rebuilt. Uh, all the bearings were replaced in them. This, this structure right here is actually hollow inside. We had to go in there and weld a bunch more steel in there to strengthen that. And then that is connected 
to the chassis by four very large hydraulic cylinders that we call GELs, stands for jacking, equalization, and leveling. Uh, each, each one of these trucks can turn. We can rotate them. They have four steering cylinders that rotates them. They can turn. We, we try to keep it within six degrees. Uh, and then we need that, that turning radius so we can get around the turns uh, from here to the VAB and out to the pad. We're looking down at one of the trucks. You see one of the big steering arms. You see all the electrical cabling that goes into the motors that turn the gearboxes and, and propel us. And then this large thing right here is a steering cylinder. There's four of those attached to each truck. Each truck weighs a million pounds, so that's why it takes four of these large cylinders to turn it. And then right behind us here, we have two of the jacking equalization and leveling cylinders. These are very large hydraulic cylinders. They go down all the way into the base of the truck. They're, I believe, oh, I want to say 20, 20 feet deep, and they can extend up to 26 feet. There's four of these on each corner, and they're, they're bigger than the original one, so they can handle the extra weight. So inside here, you have one of the, the cabs where the drivers will be. There'll be at least two in there. One is actually driving, and one is sitting in the sort of the co-pilot's chair. Everybody who's on radios during the roll, everybody's connected to each other. Everybody can talk to each other. The drivers, the engineers, the mechanics, the technicians, they're all in contact. They're all on the same net. We have a fuel tank here, 2,500 gallons of diesel fuel. We have two fuel tanks, one on this end, one on the other end. So we carry 5,000 gallons of of fuel with us at all times. Our goal is to never stop while we're rolling. We have bathrooms on board, microwave, you eat your lunch, your dinner, your breakfast, everything is on board here. We try not to stop. If we stop, something probably didn't go the way we had a plan and we got to fix something. It's a wonderful piece of machinery. If you're an engineer, this is, this is the greatest thing ever. For more about ESA and Europe's push to the moon, you can visit our website at www.esa.int. I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels. Have a great day.